This is Chris the Idaho Painter here on Paint Life TV. Today I've got more airless spraying tips and tricks for you. I'm going to be using out here at this house, not behind me, it will be behind me pretty soon, spraying alone a large house, painted it all by myself, so low. So come check it out. I'm going to be using a tri tech sprayer today and I'm going to be using the amazing dual head tip extension. If you want to see that thing in action, see what it does and why I use it, stay tuned for this video. All right, so I'm getting ready to start the spray and I got, um, I think, the majority of the masking. Um, I'm gonna tie a plant back. I'm gonna show you how to do that, but I'm getting ready to set up the sprayer on the body here. I'm gonna be spraying with a Tri-Tech T5 today. So, um, Tri-Tech T5, I don't got any large expanses where I'm gonna be just running the sprayer continually. So, um, a small sprayer like this is, um, it can work. I use this small sprayer, you know, for the first, three years exclusively you know spraying it was a titan 440i and this is very similar you do want to strain your paint so i'm going to be straining my paint to begin with yesterday um i was spraying i did the garage doors and the gables and i did not st strain the paints which we're very accustomed to not doing um, a lot of spitting a lot of issues with it so i'm going to strain the paint today and see what we get in the paint see how dirty it is i'm going to be using um, like it was yesterday glidden's um, premium glidden premium exterior paint and primer um, right here, so I'm gonna strain it. I typically use a five gallon bucket strainer like this. I like these type instead of the ones that sit on the top because it just takes too long for the paint to um, run through the strainer. I can fill this up, grab my hand, squeeze all the paint out, and I'm ready to go. So gonna strain my paints. Uh, get it loaded up. I'm gonna be spraying with a dual head tip extension um, and you're gonna see two uh, tips running at once for speed and then I'll show you another option that you can do with just one tip. So let's strain our paints. Always good practice to strain your paint prior to painting and you typically won't run into um, a lot of issues that you could run into by not straining them. So just gonna put this over the top just gonna dump my paint down inside here. So it'll give me a good idea if the issues I was having yesterday um, with it spitting were because of the paint being you know, really dirty. Once I strain it, we'll look in the strainer see what was what's in there so i'm gonna now i can lift the strainer out and this is where it's a lot faster to strain this versus waiting through for a thick paint like this to go through um, a top um, strainer that sits in a bucket now i can just grab it just squeeze it. Unfortunately, you do have to get your hands dirty before you even start, which is kind of a bummer, but it's one of the reasons why we don't like straining our paints. Now I've got dirty hands that I've got to clean. That is pretty dang clean paint. I don't see any grit. I don't see any chunks of paint or anything um, at all, so I'm not Still not sure why I was having a spitting issue, but um, it's not because of it being dirty paint. So Glidden does have really clean paint. I always use a cut lid on top of my sprayer. That way my paint's not exposed to the sun because um, it'll dry out really quick. So I put a cut lid on top and then my sprayer will go, my intake tube will go right down inside my sprayer there and then I'm gonna put a wet rag over the top of that so um, it still won't get heat and exposure so you won't get your paint skimming over on the top if your paint skims over on the top and when it starts to get empty you're gonna start to um, suck up your know, bits and pieces of the paint that'll cause spitting and clogging of filter issues I can now drop my intake tube right down into my paint bucket and I'm ready to go. As my paint starts to 
get towards the bottom. I got a sprayer saver and I'll show you how this works. You'll set your five gallon bucket on there and it leans it forward. So um, all the paint will go down to one side of the bucket. Sprayer saver is great to have too, but we're ready to start loading this thing up. Now here's, uh, if you're spraying something um, that you really, it's critical you don't get any spits on, you'd wanna run paint through your prime tube first. You don't have to uh, run paint through the prime tube. It'll clean out a lot quicker if you don't run paint through the prime tube. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna squeeze my trigger. It's in the spray mode. We start running it. So my pressure at the pump now is around 2200 PSI. I always leave my prime tube in an empty bucket of water. So um, there's, you know, no air can go up inside the prime tube. My um, bucket is sitting here exposed. I'm gonna set a wet rag right over the top of that. Now that paint won't skim over and dry out on the top. This is a dual head tip extension. So I can run two tips on this gun the same time, so it gives me a significantly wider pattern, but I can run smaller tips also. So I'm running two 515s, so, and I'll get a 12 inch pattern versus running a 12 inch, um, like a 1221. It'll give me a lot more overspray. So this is gonna control overspray. Another advantage of this is if I wanna just run one tip, all I gotta do is turn one tip back, um, sideways and the tip is now off. I could run one tip or two tips. So I've got two tips, twice the distance, spread. This is called, the, um, it's the high dual head tip extension. So you'll be able to spray, especially you'll see when I'm spraying these soffits under these overhangs, it's gonna make it a lot faster to spray because I don't like looking up and causing my neck to just hurt all day long. Got the GoPro action going on so we can see what we're doing while we're spraying. So it's ready to go, my pressure is set. Gonna get my respirator, get my gloves on. I always like wearing gloves because the gun, if it's sitting out in the sun, it could get hot. Gloves also give me better grip when it comes to holding on to the gun when you're spraying all day long. I do like two finger triggers, can't stand four finger triggers because you need two fingers to control your gun and then two fingers to pull the trigger. So if you got a four finger gun, get rid of it and get a two finger gun. All right, sprayer's ready to go. The other thing is, is running two 515s, a little pump like this can handle a width, um, fan width at 12 inches with two 515s, but a little pump like this would not be able to run a 1221. So another advantage um, to this, um, the dual head tip extension, being able to uh, use it with smaller pumps. I'm gonna go back and we're gonna spray, start with a soffit in the back. Um, I think I got enough hose to reach back there. I think I got about 150 feet of hose and let's get rocking and rolling. Two high production um, tips, Titan, H um, Titan high production, 515 tips is what we're rocking today. So let's go.
All right, we started the spray and now I'm working. I started at the back of the house, working my way around. Just want to go over some quick pointers pointers when it comes to spraying and you always want to or not always but try to spray uh, on lot where there's logical start and stop points so I don't want to start spraying in the middle of a run right here and then and spray to this end and come here and keep going back because you'll get a heavy spot right here and over time as the house begins to fade you'll start to see that you know fade over time logical start and stop points the body i would spray from end to end right here eventually when you get up high on a house on a two-story house you're not going to be able to hit logical start and stop points like trim boards window trim corner boards and or batting boards stuff like that here the start and stop points on this on um, the ceiling you know from end to end or lengthwise lengthwise just always try to or not always but you know try to um, find logical start and stop points because you don't want those heavy spots in the middle of a field you also um, you'll get what we call flashing if you um, start and stop in the middle of the field too so um, it's probably about you know 70 80 percent of the time you can find a large a logical start and stop point to be spraying so I'm going to be spraying around the house trying to, uh, you know, you know um, use that te technique and use those pointers. So as we're cruising around the house, just, you know, watch as I'm spraying. Um, some of the other things, gun angle, you want to have your gun angle spray up. You want to be hitting the lap. You don't want to come down at an angle like this. The bottom of the lap's not going to get sprayed. Also inside the um, the batting boards, corner boards, stuff like that. There's holes right here. You want the spray to go in. So I'm gonna be spraying, shooting at an angle, both ways, getting in there. So as you're coming down here, make sure you're spraying up to hit the bottom of the lap boards. Corner boards like this, I'm gonna be spraying them back and forth, side to side, hitting the corner board, both ends. I'll be using a cardboard shield to help uh, control overspray if there is any overspray. Right now there's a low wind. Uh, it's extremely warm outside. So if, while I'm shooting the back sides of the fascia, you're going to get a little bit of um, uh, overspray shooting up in the air, but it flash dries. And by the time it hits the ground, it's just going to be dust and out here in the grass and stuff like that. It's not going to land on as wet paint, but try to you know spray according to your comfort zone. Right here, I'm going to be spraying 515 tip has been working you know, right now around 2200 PSI. Um, if you're not comfortable controlling overspray, you definitely would want to have a drop cloth down on any type of concrete areas where you're actually spraying. So it's really up to your comfort zone, how long you've been spraying, whether you need to cover stuff up you know, significantly. There's patio furniture. I definitely wouldn't want to be spraying with this furniture right here. I'm going to be moving furniture out. If you can't move it, cover it with plastic. So you can cover anything you know, with plastic that you're not comfortable spraying around. But down here, this concrete right here, spraying overhead, anything that was gonna land down here would be just dust and it would just blow right off, you know, at the end of the day when we're blowing off um, everything with the blower. So um, here we go, gonna be shooting, uh, finishing this side and then uh, the face up here. Well, we'd be able to find logical start and stop points everywhere along the front of this house. The side of the house is extremely hard um, or extremely high. So you cannot uh, find logical start and stop points on high sides like that. Not good to paint them when it's um, sunny on the sun side. That was the sun was hitting it in the morning. It's better to wait till the sun moves to the other side of the house and then hit that side of the house um, when it's not sunny because the paint's going to dry a lot faster. And if you're up and down ladders, you're not going to be able to keep a wet edge. When I'm spraying, as I'm spraying up or down, I'm overlapping 50% as I'm spraying and um, keeping a wet edge in the entire time. Some of these details about spraying, um, I have multiple videos on how to spray with an airless sprayer. You can go back and you know check those videos out for reference, but I'm gonna get um, finish up spraying, move, move around this direction.
all tools, accessories, or a lot of them that you see. Um, we'll have links down in the video description below, or you can go check out our store at store.theidahopainter.com. All right, so we're getting uh, finishing up over here. We're getting low on paint. And I wanted to show you, here's another pretty handy little tool. It's called the sprayer saver. And this thing, your bucket, uh, five gallon bucket, sits right on that thing. A gallon or five gallon will sit on it. It tilts it back. So now your intake tube won't suck air and you're less likely to um, you know, run, do a lot of damage to your sprayer or wear parts out because it's sucking air because you're way up high on a roof or something like that. So this is gonna take it all the way down to the very bottom of the five. It's called the Sprayer Saver. Um, great little tool. Once your five gets down a little bit, you can just set it on there and it'll set on there. And it's also very, very sturdy. It's on there really good. It is not gonna fall over at all instead of just trying to tilt your five gallon bucket, stick like a rock underneath it or a caulking gun. That thing uh, works absolutely amazing. The sprayer saver, absolutely love it. All right, we're all done spraying the body of the house. Um, well, most of the body. So I've got two large dormers up here that are gonna be really difficult to get to. Gonna to have to put some roof boots up, up there, some ladder jacks to get to those, but all the lower body stuff in the um, gable ends, high gable ends, they're all sprayed and um, so it's two days into the spraying. We do got some soffits to uh, mask on the gables and stuff to spray those soffits. We'll get the rest of that spraying done tomorrow on our third day and then we'll probably start doing some of the trim, rolling some of this trim here. So um, that will be day, today's day two of the painting. Tomorrow will be day three. So stay tuned for day three if you want to get notified when Day, day three comes out don't forget hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell that way you get notified by email it's simple free easy to do click the subscribe button click the notification bell and then we'll see you on our next video if you enjoyed this video don't forget give us a thumbs up if you got any questions or comments about all any of this process that's going on just leave them down in the questions and comment section below and we'll try to answer you know all the questions and comments that are coming in there might be a lot might be a little we're not sure so comments hit the like hit the subscribe subscribe hit the notification bell and we'll see you on our next video out